so let us uh, the first thing that I, I introduce you to to is the Laplace equation uh, if this if u is a function uh, yeah you just just this equation del square u upon del x1 square plus del square u upon let, let it be only x instead of x1 del y square equal to zero this is laplace equation laplace equation and uh, it's a partial differential equation and uh, uh, a function now when i say a function means it can be complex value or the real value as well but usually let, let's take the real value a function in two variables u in two variables uh, uh, which has all its first and second order partials first and second order partials continuous partial derivatives continuous derivatives continuous and is a solution of of uh, let, let this equation be one let this equation one is a solution of equation one then this function is uh, shall be henceforth called a harmonic function wherever it is defined whatever domain of it is defined but provided it needs to be there uh, a solution of this uh, Laplace equation and it's all uh, for up to first and second order partial derivatives need to be continuous is called a harmonic function here's a harmonic function and uh, you can get a lot of examples uh, for, of harmonic functions for through analytic functions if you have lots of analytic functions you will have lots of harmonic functions as can be seen uh, from this theorem it says that if f is a complex valued function its real part is u and imaginary is v is analytic on any domain let it be analytic on a domain d then it's both these functions u and v are harmonic functions v are harmonic functions so clearly uh, you, you just have to apply a cauchy riemann equation um, but uh, before that uh, to establish the continuity of the up to first uh, uh, the partial derivatives of this u and v it is clear since this function is analytic and we know that analytic functions have all continuous derivatives uh, so their uh, real and uh, real their parts this component function this u and v will also have all continuous partial derivatives that's done now to show that this u and v are solutions of actually this laplace equation and uh, this follows uh, directly from uh, cauchy riemann equation how it follows mm, let me first uh, for the sake of completeness clearly mm, u and v have all their partial derivatives continuous partial derivatives continuous they have all their partial derivatives continuous now uh, since f is an analytic function u and v must be solutions of cr equations so uh, from cr equations we have this from cr equations we have partial derivative of u with respect to x has to be partial derivative of u v with respect to y and uh, partial derivative of u with respect to y has to be 
minus of partial derivative of v with respect to x. So these are the CR equations. Uh, and <coughs> since u and v have all other partial derivatives also, so we can differentiate once again these equations. Uh, let us first differentiate uh, this first equation, differentiate it with respect to x and the second one you partially differentiated with respect to y then what we have uh, we can we have now this from first equation i will get del square u upon del x square will be equal to del square v upon del x del y and uh, if we differentiate the second one equation with respect to y I will have del square u upon del y square is equal to minus del square v upon del y del x. Is it okay? Yes, sir. So, okay. Now, uh, let us add th these two equations. What, what, what I get? I get del square u upon del x square plus del square u del y square this is equal to del square v del x del y minus del square since so right hand side is now your zero y right hand side is uh, zero uh, y because v has continuous partial derivatives and continuous partial derivatives will imply that they have mixed equal mixed partial derivatives since v has continuous partials so mixed partial derivatives of v are equal this thing is equal to the mixed partial of with respect to x and then y so these two are equal and hence from this equation we get to see that the right hand side reduces to zero and uh, this establish that is u is a solution of this laplace equation likewise you can establish that this v is also a solution of laplace equation to to for, uh, to complete that uh, uh, v is also thus uh, we, we see that u is harmonic and likewise v is also harmonic v is also harmonic so you know a lot of examples of harmonic analytic functions and if you have to consider examples of this is one of the easiest thing to get lots of examples of harmonic functions through analytic functions so uh, this theorem establishes a link a connection with this theory of analytic functions and uh, the theory of harmonic functions now let us further further explore this thing uh, let us let me first define a term that uh, suppose u and v are harmonic functions harmonic functions on some domain d such that uh, these u and v are real valued actually uh, i'm taking your real valued harmonic functions such that if i define a complex valued function u plus iv if this happens to be analytic if this is analytic on t then we say that then v is known to be to be a harmonic conjugate harmonic conjugate for u it's a harmonic conjugate of u or you must say that it is a, you can say that u it's a harmonic conjugate function harmonic conjugate function for you you one thing note that a harmonic conjugate is always a harmonic function but when does it becomes a harmonic conjugate when u plus iv is harmonic uh, analytic function 
so v is harmonic conjugate i'm not saying that u is a harmonic conjugate of v no they, they, this is not true indeed if v is harmonic conjugate of u it is not necessary that u is also harmonic conjugate of uh, u is also harmonic conjugate of v indeed there is a uh, i will put it as a remark that if v is harmonic conjugate if it is harmonic conjugate of u then minus of u is harmonic conjugate of harmonic conjugate of v not the other way not the other way you can we can verify it uh, indeed it's the verification is very simple because uh, you see when you say that v is harmonic conjugate of u uh, that implies um, this function f u plus i v is analytic let this be this then 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 it is analytic why because v is harmonic conjugate by definition it is analytic and uh, if function is analytic obviously if i multiply this analytic function with any constant then that constant is again analytic function and i'm multiplying this uh, f by minus i so that i will get minus i u plus i will have minus i i v what it is it is uh, i and i you will have a minus one and minus u it will be v my uh, plus i times minus u so this is also an analytic function so uh, this is this is also this is also analytic this is also analytic hence if this is analytic by definition of harmonic conjugate it follows that minus u is minus u is harmonic conjugate of v so this thing is for sure that this is a harmonic conjugate of v now let us look at this thing the why u can't be harmonic conjugate of v now suppose uh, let us disprove this suppose that u is harmonic conjugate of v when v is harmonic conjugate of o harmonic conjugate of v then we know that minus u is always harmonic conjugate so then then so uh, suppose this is harmonic conjugate of we have to we have to get uh, some contradiction u is harmonic conjugate of v then what will happen that will mean then this function let me denote it by g it is v plus i u is harmonic is, is analytic is analytic but we know that minus u is harmonic conjugate so this function v plus i times minus u is also analytic this i just proved that let, let this function be h this i just proved that minus u is always harmonic conjugate of v whenever v is harmonic conjugate of v now you have these two analytic function if you assume that u is harmonic conjugate of v as well and uh, some of these two uh, analytic functions is again an, an analytic function so this implies that g plus h but g plus h you will be left only with twice of v uh, u and minus u will cancel out so this is analytic this is analytic but uh, you see now that this is a function which is purely a real re real analytic function and you know that uh, if uh, any analytic function whose uh, either real or imaginary part is constant are missing then that function is a constant function so this implies that this function is constant that means twice of v is constant or that is to say that um, v is constant v is a constant function v is constant function 
v is constant and v is constant implies that uh, u is constant uh, because uh, uh, because of cr equations you will get u also constant or, not, uh, or you, even you don't go to the cr equations v constant means your function g is a function whose real part is constant and again by uh, this result that whenever real or imaginary part is constant the other part will also be a constant so u will be constant so u is also constant so whenever uh, we say that u is harmonic conjugate of v if v is harmonic conjugate that this is only possible when u and v both are constant that means if one of them is non-constant then we will never have this u to be harmonic conjugate of v whenever v is a harmonic conjugate of u is it okay yes so so <clears throat> the next big question is uh, that uh, there are functions uh, there are uh, harmonic functions to which you may not have harmonic conjugates not every harmonic function have a harmonic conjugate the, indeed the uh, I, I should put it in this way that the existence of harmonic conjugate uh, depends upon the topology of the domain it depends upon the type of the domain that you have and uh, what i'm going to simply put right to for you is that uh, harmonic conjugate of a harmonic function harmonic function on arbitrary domain t may or may not exist there are functions in harmonic conjugate will, will will exist everywhere but there are functions for which you may not, might not but there is a definiteness there is a definiteness and the theorem is hmm, that harmonic conjugate of a harmonic function of a harmonic function u on a simply connected domain on a simply connected domain d exists this is a result this is the important thing that where simply connected domains are the domain where you will have this guarantee that harmonic conjugate always exists of a harmonic function there is no other uh, thought but now we, we 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 need a certain preparation for this proof of this theorem i have to introduce certain things so to complete the proof of this theorem and the next few slides are going to talk about what we are going to require. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce to you some differential stuff. And uh, let us, let me call it a preparation uh, for proof. We need certain terminologies. And first, if, uh, if I have a function, hxy be a continuously differentiable function continuously differentiable function continuously differentiable indeed let let us take this to be complex valued it can be complex value control function then the differential differential of h uh, denoted i'm going to reserve this notation denoted dh is defined as you define it as dh to be partial derivative of h with respect to x in dx plus partial derivative of h with respect to y 
dy. This is known as the differential of this function, continuously differentiable function h. And uh, generally, differentials are what uh, uh, let p dx plus q dy, where p and q are continuously differentiable functions, are continuously differentiable functions differentiable functions <laughs> complex value differentiable functions and then this pdx plus qdy is called a differential differential this is just called the differential and this differential is then this differential pdx plus qdy is called an exact differential exact differential if p d x plus q d y is a differential of some continuously differentiable function that means this is differential of some continuously differentiable function for some continuously differentiable function differentiable function h okay wherever the domain of p and q is the we are we, are, we have to distinguish so no need to talk about domain here so any differential uh, which is a differential of some function that what what it means it means that uh, uh, that is uh, p is partial derivative of this h with respect to x and q is partial derivative of this uh, h with respect to y that means p and q are derivatives of some common function h with respect to x and y respectively then th that fun that differential is the exact differential there is another type of differential that uh, those differential are known as closed differentials closed differentials so what is a closed differential uh, the differential this differential where p and q again we are uh, taking p and q to be continuously differentiable functions this e dx plus q dy is this is a differentiable differential and this is known to be closed differential this is known as closed differential if partial derivative of p with respect to y happens to be partial derivative of q with respect to x if you have this equality then we say that this differential is a closed differential and uh, now we have to explore first uh, the relation among these two type of differentials closed and exact differential and uh, what is the relation relation is that uh, exact differential is always a closed differential but uh, the other way it is not true and uh, why closed exact differential is a closed differential uh, it, it follows directly uh, it can be seen from here if we have a differential which is exact differential then obviously that differential is going to be a differential of some continuously differentiable function and uh, then from there you get p to be a partial derivative of that function with respect to x and q is going to be partial derivative of that function with respect to y and now you have to establish that partial derivative of p with respect to y is equal to partial of with respect q with respect to x and uh, let us calculate this partial of p with respect to x i'm just going to do the uh, quickly it here only just let's take different color so uh, uh, if we calculate partial derivative of p with respect to y what it is going to be it is going to be partial derivative of h second order partial derivative of h with respect to y and x and partial derivative of q it is going to be del q upon del x it's going to be del square h del x del y and now since h is a continuously differentiable function so it has equal mixed partial derivatives so this right hand side is 
right hand side of both these equations is same these are equal uh, expressions this will imply that this partial of p with respect to y is equal to partial of q with respect to x so that, that that is the condition for this differential to be closed differential so this establishes that closed differentials are exact differential are closed but not the other way and uh, there is another link <coughs> uh, i'm just giving is uh, writing the, the an example of a differential which is closed but not exact and what is that thing is let us let let me write this and this is the differential which you may verify uh, y dx upon let me write it in a compact form x dy x square plus y square and where i have to take this domain punctured plane it has a hole in it at origin so uh, this is not a simply connected domain um, because uh, roughly speaking uh, simply connected domains are the domains which do not have holes in them so it has a hole so this is not a simply connected domain and uh, i have considered a um, differential in it then this differential is closed you 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 may verify why what is p p is here minus y upon x square plus y square and x is x upon x square plus y square you just verify that they are corresponding partials uh, partial of p with respect to y and q with q partial of q with respect to x are equal so it is closed differential but it is not exact it is not exact and for exactness there is an uh, another condition uh, sir up ki voice nahi aa rahi okay is it now clear yes abari okay ye kab se kab se ruk gayi thi ye sir abhi ruki thi exact ke baad ruk gayi thi jab apne exact likha acha is exact ke baad hai na yes sir yes sir okay 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 now dy upon x square plus y square uh, you, you can calculate this is a line integral and i'm just going to write directly its value here you just to convert it into polar coordinates you will have this thing equal to 2 pi and this is non zero and this is one of the result uh, uh, that we will see that uh, if a differential is exact then the integral of that differential line integral of that differential over any closed path is always zero so you have this circle this is a closed path this is a closed path and uh, this is a one of the closed path and over this closed path the integral of this differential is non vanishing and uh, therefore this is not an exact differential we will we will state that result later on that for exact differential the integral our closed path is always zero so this is not zero so this is average this is not a exact differential but it is a closed differential so th th this is okay now now okay then uh, now uh, let me now mm, give you uh, uh, this uh, let's see i need to i need to give you the definition of uh, the formation of paths uh, what what it mean by the formation of a path suppose we have two paths uh, let me first write the formation of a path to a single point that would be nice to just define first let me write this let us take a path 
gamma t defined on this interval be a closed path suppose it is a closed path in some domain t then it is said that gamma is and deformable deformable to a point it is deformable to a point if there are closed paths there are closed paths gamma sub st and uh, where t is again in this open inter closed interval and s is restricted to the unit interval and these paths must again lie in domain t such that uh, these paths gamma st they must depend continuously on both the parameters s and t they must vary continuously with the s and t and the initial path gamma zero as far as equal to zero must coincide with the path gamma the original path that we want to deform to the point and the final path when we reach at s equals to one this path needs to be the constant path some point z is the constant path is the constant path okay then we say that then this path is a deformable it's like the we we see that if if i take a circle in in the complex plane and then this is deformable to any point inside the circle because what we can do we can define smaller circles inside it we can define smaller circles inside it smaller 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 and we can make this circle small 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 and up so that finally you in this circle it gets deformed to the single point this we can compress it this is the in a in a more in a layman's language that if this path you compress this path this path must shrink to a single point and such paths are said to be deformable to a point and uh, if we have a domain d if d is a domain domain in which in which every closed path is deformable is deformable to a point then this domain d is called a simply connected domain this is called a simply connected domain so here it is why we say that uh, a domain is a simply connected if it doesn't have any holes because if they let us look at this punctured plane it has a hole at origin this is the punctured plane c minus zero because if if you have a path which encircles this puncture then this path will never be able to you will never be able to deform this path uh, to to any point because once you deform it when it reaches this origin it will it will it will be trapped inside this hole it will enter this hole it will not be a something which is compressed to this point okay so that's why we don't have holes in simply connected domains so this is the broader way to uh, define what is a simply connected domain a domain which in which you have every closed path deformable to a point
and uh, it will be very clear now let us look at this uh, example uh, as we have seen there is uh, if you remember what are star shaped domains with respect to any point a star shaped shaped domain for example let us look at this if we have a point here then not uh, then this domain d will be known as a star shaped domain with respect to this point z not if i take any other point in this domain and if i connect this point with this z not through a straight line and uh, after connecting this if all these straight lines lie within this domain they do not go outside of this domain now none no portion of this line lies outside of this domain every line lies inside this domain then we say that this domain is a star shaped with respect to this particular point and star shaped domains are simply connected domains and uh, convex domains are always star shaped domains they by default they follow because in convex domains you you connect any two points by a straight line segment they line still lies within the domain t. so uh, i'm going to establish now uh, through using this definition of simply connected domains that star shaped domains are always simply connected domains so let us take d and be a star shaped domain with respect to some point with respect to some point z naught and this z naught still is in now uh, what we have to do we we require to prove that this domain d is a simply connected domain and to show that it is a simply connected domain you just take an arbitrary closed path in this domain and you establish that that closed path can be deformed to a point in that domain and on that point here will be z naught so let us take gamma be a, any closed path in d this is a closed path in d then let us what we have we need but we need this to deform this path we need uh, now more closed paths and uh, those closed paths need to be continuously dependent and depend on s and t then let us define the path gamma s t to be i'm defining it as s z naught plus one minus s gamma t how you are defining you have this thing you have domain d and uh, inside uh, i just chose some okay let me make it smaller so that i have set up space here i have a closed path comma and suppose here is this point with respect to which this domain is star shaped now what i'm going to do uh, for s and t uh, for fixed t uh, uh, let it be something gamma t here it will be gamma t here and i'm just joining it through a straight line and this is a straight line okay similarly if i take change the t i will get some another point on the path comma and again i will connect it with straight line and this straight line is nothing but this is gamma uh, any point on this any point on this straight line any point on this straight line uh, is of this form it has to be in gamma t one minus s plus some s at z naught so this is this is how you are defining this these paths okay so then clearly if you look at this uh, gamma st as a function of two variables this is a, the this is a function of two variables s and t and clearly it is continuous function gamma is continuous function it is continuous function in both s and t 
so uh, this establishes that this these paths gamma s t they are paths they are continuous they are paths and uh, they are depending continuously on s as well as t uh, also uh, they are closed paths you can see uh, if you if you substitute t to be uh, whatever a then you will uh, th these are these are paths uh, how, how you're going to define it uh, for fixed s for uh, let us take for s equal to zero first for s equal to zero you will have gamma zero of t a is going to be gamma of t and for gamma s equals to one gamma one of t is nothing but this is z now so you have the these paths here so they are they are they are closed path you can you can verify there is no issue they are closed path and they are depending continuously on s and t and the initial path is the path gamma and the final s equals to one path is the constant path z naught so this by definition follows that this path gamma is deformable to a point z naught we are bringing it down somewhere in this way in this way we are we were just deforming it to point z naught so this establishes that uh, whatever path you choose in this star shaped domain whatever closed path not whatever but whatever closed path you choose that path is continuously deformable to a constant path in the domain d and that implies that this star shaped domains are always simply connected domains so uh, this establishes that uh, you have enough domains which are simply connected because you can you will have now simply connected domains you will have uh, any convex domain will be a simply connected domain and your uh, every disk is a simply uh, connected because every disk is a convex domain within disk you can you, you can join any two points with a straight line and that line lies within that domain again okay so now let me uh, go again to something uh, path independence of a differential so that then we reach to the proof path independence of line integral okay mm. the line integral of this differential p dx plus q dy is is said to be is said to be path independent is said to be path independent in domain d in domain d if for any two points a and b in t the integral integrals comma p dx plus q dy are the same for any path comma in d from a to b okay what it says it says that uh, if if you have this domain d and you have this integral uh, line integral if you fix any two points here it says that this integral will be known as a path independent that means if i have a and b here then whatever path i take whether i take this path from a to b 
or I take this path from A to B. Uh, if I get the value of the integral to be same over any path from A to B is same, whether whether I take this integral over comma naught or comma one from provided the both the paths are from A to B. If the value of the integral is same, then we say that these are path independent integral. The, the, the integral is path independent. The another equivalent uh, equivalent way to say that this is a path independent integral is to say that uh, if you take integral over closed path, because if I now form this to be a closed path, just a minute, give me a minute. Okay, the another way to see uh, the path independence of a integral is to see that over any closed path, the integral is always zero. Uh, because uh, uh, if you have this situation that your integral is zero over any closed path, then that is independent. And then you have to show that uh, over any two paths, the value of the integral is same. And that uh, if you choose here, comma naught and comma one, then if you reorient the uh, one of the path either uh, gamma 1 or gamma 2 let me let me reorient this one then i get a closed path from a to b then this closed path a to b will imply that the integral over this closed path uh, will be zero this integral will be zero or this closed path let it, it be gamma naught minus gamma 1 and uh, since they are distinct paths, I can write integral separately. And uh, comma one has different orientation, uh, negative orientation. So it will be comma one. Both the value of the integral is zero. And this will imply that the value of the integral over comma naught is equal to the value of the integral over comma one. So this is one of the conditions that uh, path independent in uh, path independent another equivalent definition of path independence of integrals and uh, as a remark i can record for you this thing that this integral pdx line integral of this differential is path independent path independent if and only if the value of this integral is zero for any closed path gamma in D. Yeah, this is okay. Finally, we, 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 I need to state two lemmas and then we will be through to the proof of the theorem of existence of the harmonic conjugate. And uh, the lemma without proof one, it says that uh, suppose P and Q be continuous differentiable complex valued functions on domain D, then this integral, line integral of this differential P dx plus Q dy is independent of path. This is independent of path in domain D if and only if the integral that is being integrated the differential this is being integrated is exact so there is a relation between exact integrals and path independent integrals they are same a path a path independent a line integral of a differential if and only if the differential is exact and the lemma second that i'm going to state precisely for you is that uh,
and we have two paths gamma naught and gamma one both defined on this interval a b b2 closed paths b2 closed paths in domain d and suppose that gamma naught can be continuously can be continuously just a minute there is someone calling continuous it as early as I can <clears throat> so uh, suppose you have this gamma naught can be continuously deformed to another path gamma 1 then it says that the line integral over gamma 1 of this differential is same as the line integral our gamma two gamma naught so if you have two paths which are uh, deformable continuously deformable one path is continuously deformable to the other then the line integral of this differential is same then the line integral of this differential is same uh, on mm, uh, th these two paths but provided provided this differential is closed provided this differential is closed differential so these are the two essential lemmas required for the completion of the proof of this existence of uh, harmonic conjugate and uh, the another preliminary result that uh, we require is that uh, on simply connected domains closed differentials closed differentials are exact differentials closed differentials are exact differentials this is it and this is something uh, indeed this is uh, so a necessary and sufficient condition for a domain to be a simply connected domain but we will discuss it later on and how how it is going to help us uh, to establish that the harmonic conjugate of a differential exists is the following 
let us take u b a harmonic function u b harmonic u b harmonic then you can verify it that this differential del u upon del y dx i'm taking p to be del u upon del y because u has all these partial derivatives plus del u upon del x dy then this differential is closed this is a closed differential and if it is a harmonic function on simply connected domains then this remark says that it is exact also hence it is exact hence it is exact differential on simply connected domain d if it is exact what it means exact differential means it is a differential of some continuously differentiable function so there is some continuously differentiable function v such that this is equal to d of v and d of v means it is partial derivative of v with respect to x into dx plus it is partial derivative of v with respect to y it is dy and if you compare the uh, terms of this what you get you get minus del u uh, del y is equal to del v upon del x and del u upon del x is equal to del v upon del y and now these two equations that you have got here are nothing but they are the cauchy riemann equations being satisfied by u and v and u and v have continuous partial derivatives and they have they satisfy cauchy riemann equations also and hence by the partial converse of the cauchy riemann equations it follows that this function which is formed by using u plus iv is analytic if this is analytic then clearly u and v both are v is also harmonic function and hence it proves that uh, it proves that v is harmonic v is harmonic function v is harmonic uh, conjugate harmonic function and harmonic conjugate of u so this is all that we needed for this so i stop here